I was born in Chicago. We moved here when I was uh, 15. Why here? To California. We came because my grandfather was here, and we left Chicago. We had to move because the neighborhood changed. We had to move somewhere, and they picked California. And I'm so happy they picked California. Started out as an RN, did that for a few years. Then I became an interior designer, also started painting and teaching painting. And I didn't become a sculptor till I was about 52. We had a big recession in California, and uh, they stopped building. They stopped building homes and offices. Late and 80s? No, that was 90. This was the 91, sure. or 92 to 96. That's how I got my house, too. Um, I mean, they actually went down enough on South Bayfront, you could buy a house. For a million three. Yep. Good for you. Now it's worth seven times more. <laughs>they sent a contract they sent the whole package i signed everything sent it back they signed it we opened escrow and then they said we're canceling escrow we're not going to sell to you and i was really deflated um and actually i didn't do anything for a while because i didn't know i could but i was friends with the guy who owns rogers realty rogers gardens and he told me he said they can't do that the contract is the contract, and escrow is just a secretary to enforce the contract. So I got a lawyer, and then they got a lawyer, and then they made me go to court because they tried to get a bond. Anyway, the judge gave it to me. They said, you have to close right away, and I said, fine. <laughs> so I closed uh, the very end of 1996. Ian Harrison, that's the architect. And I got Ian Harrison, the one who helped me, to be my architect, and um, I did my own space planning, figured out how I wanted everything. And so you knew this was gonna be your studio, too? Studio and home, and I'm staying there till I die. Sculpting, um, is it hard? Not for me. Um, <laughs> well, because? because I had painted, and you train, you train your eye to see things. So you, you become very, very observant. I, I look at everything. I mean, it has to do with my art. I look at people's faces, I look at colors. I just, I'm constantly- you know, You're big on smiling from reading some stories. You really want your subjects to smile, and they well, don't always smile. I want them to have some life. So um, sometimes I do ones where people are screaming and stuff like that, that's life too. But not, not as a client. I did my mom six months before she died, and I. I could still go up the stairs and talk to her. <laughs> um, the ones I've done of my kids and things like that. Uh, people, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to get to know people. When you sculpt them, you talk to them. You're and spending on, if, they're, if they've got the time, mm -hmm. I mean, they obviously don't have to sit there the whole time. No, no. But if they've got the time, they could be there as long as... Yeah, well, I've gotten a lot faster. So I did Leslie Moonbus. Before he got, <laughs> before he got unpopular. <laughs> he didn't die, but he's dead man walking. <laughs> yeah, he is. He really is. But he was very nice, and he sat for me two times. How did you get to do him? Uh, you know, were. I the Television Academy of Arts and Sciences. They um, hired me to do a number of them. I did Dan Rather. I got to go to New York and meet with him. He's really nice. Um, and then Aaron, Aaron Spelling wasn't alive, but I got to meet Candy <laughs> and to go to their house. <laughs> One of my kids said, how many sculptures do you have in the house? So I went around with a paper and pencil. There's 120 ones there, there and there's other ones that I've done. They're all gone, so I've done a lot. Dr. Beckman was a very important person. He did a lot of important, important inventions, and he was 95 or so when, when he came, and he'd come to my studio. I think he made it to 100 or 101. 100 and several, 100 yeah, and a couple, yeah. yeah. 100 and several, yeah. yeah. Um, and he told me lots of stories, how he started out. He had run away from home on a train, and he played the piano in, in silent movies, and it was just really fun sculpting him. I get really good light there too, so I'll have my back to the, to the bay, but the sculpture gets the light, and the person sitting for me gets the light on them. Our, um, George Arjo was sat for me that way. He saw a lot of people that he knew go by. <laughs>
<laughs> you knew a lot of them. It's the best place in the world to live. I can't believe how lucky I am. Somebody who came from Chicago and we were we weren't we didn't have money. We were at all to end up where I ended up on Balboa Island in this wonderful house. I blessed. Yeah. And you're I, not slowing down. No, I love sculpting. I'm not. I'm going to keep doing it till I die, and I'm going to live to 104. I'm going to be 80 on my next birthday, and um, I have to live to 104. I was going to live to 100, but my brother said he wants me to be at his birthday, <laughs> so that means I have to live to 104. <laughs>